Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. And this week we're taking a closer look at the Universal Audio Ox and asking the question, is it worth the hype? <laughs> start of 2018 and in two two and a half years i guess has undoubtedly made an absolutely massive impact it's become ubiquitous on stages and studios home or professional across the world and at this point the word ox is near enough a byword for this type of device now there's a million and one videos dedicated to the ox and its functionality so i'm not going to dig too deeply into that today this is more of an overview and as i said trying to get at the bottom of whether it is worth the hype but if you're not familiar with the ox it is in essence a reactive load units and what that means is that you can safely plug your valve amp into it obviously if you don't plug your valve amp into a speaker it will happily blow up very quickly all the while fooling your amp into thinking that it is connected to a speaker and the two main purposes of this is it allows for silent playing on headphones or through monitors if playing at volume at home isn't an option but you still want valve amp tone or more practically allows for silent recording Obviously, it also acts as an attenuator, and again, what this means, the kind of time-honoured reference at this point, say you've got a Marshall Plexi or maybe a Fender Twin, you can plug it into the aux, crank up the amp, but control the overall volume through the aux, meaning that you're going to be more friendly to not only sound men, but local authorities. Where the aux really comes to life, however, is in its emulation of not only speakers, but actual microphones. I've made no kind of bones, to be honest, about my ambivalence or distrust, shall we say, of IRs or impulse responses in live use or in a studio context, to be honest. They're just not something that I'd really get on with. So that said, I was really intrigued to try Universal Audio's take on the technology, especially as they go to great pains to express the fact that these are not IRs. These are their own dynamic speaker modelling, which, aside from sounding like a marketing gimmick or marketing bump, is genuinely unique. And having spent a good amount of time with this in the recent weeks, I can honestly say this comes closer to capture in the sound of a speaker in a studio than any other speaker emulator that I've ever used. Not providing the aux with an IR loader or impulse response loader, to be honest, is a bit of a ballsy move, even more so at the price point at which this retails at. But, to be honest, it's kind of proved to be the perfect solution for someone like myself who, whilst having a rudimentary understanding of microphone choice or placement, has never really delved too far beyond what the engineer has told me that he's done to my speaker or to my amp. It's not something I've ever kind of really delved into, to be honest. I've got enough expensive hobbies as it is without starting to worry about collecting microphones. So in that respect, being limited to 22 speaker emulations and six microphone choices really does make you focus not so much on kind of tweaking or getting lost down the rabbit holes of sounds, but just getting a sound that works for you and playing, which ultimately is what it's all about. <laughs>
Also worth mentioning that the Ox comes equipped with a room control, which, as the name suggests, allows you to dial in the sound of the room, or in this case, the studio where these speakers were emulated. The sole aim of that, I guess, is to give you a little bit more natural ambience and the feel of being in the room with an amp. You can choose this to be in mono or stereo, depending on your microphone choice. That kind of then positions microphones in different parts of the studio as well, and also comes with a very fetching rug, which allows you to dampen the room reflections. Speaking of fetching rugs, the Ox's digital interface really is a work of art. Whether you're running it on a computer or an iOS device, not only functionally but aesthetically it just works beautifully and is incredibly intuitive to get your head around. And even if you've never kind of spent any great deal of time in a studio before, I hazard a guess that you will very quickly understand what control does what and how it affects the overall tone of your guitar. It's worth mentioning that each channel or each microphone comes equipped with its own EQ control. You can then pan that left or right and then you get a master bus which allows for overall EQing as well as compression it's a brilliant 1176 emulation as well as delay and an absolutely gorgeous play reverb. <laughs> functionality and the design of the digital interface and then coupled that with the speaker selections that you are given has in every scenario thus far allowed me to pair my amp whatever amp it is with its real world companion again giving them the sense that you're not so much here in the aux but you are here in the amp to its fullest potential i really think that is a very key feature of the aux however it is worth mentioning that the one rabbit hole that i kind of have fallen down a little bit is not having spring reverb within the aux. Obviously, you've got that gorgeous plate reverb, and it really is fantastic, but I'm a bit of a spring reverb junkie, and I'm a particular fan of the spring reverb that you get within Native Instruments Guitar Rig. One interesting point I discovered is that if you bypass each microphone within the aux and reroute it to a direct box, Obviously, that allows for recabbing, I guess, if that's a phrase, within maybe your third party or your chosen IRs. So, rerouting the signal into Guitar Rig allowed me not only to add my spring reverb, but actually pair it with a couple of different speaker emulations within that software. Some will consider it sacrilege bypassing the aux functionality in that respect and using near enough 10 year old technology. But again, it is cool to know that if you need to do that for whatever reason, you can. Now, here's a quick AB between a cab in Guitar Rig and a cab in Universal Audio Ox. <laughs> So would I recommend the Ox? I mean, in terms of functionality and aesthetics, absolutely in a heartbeat. Like every bit of UA gear that I've ever used, not only looks brilliant, but as you would hope, sounds fantastic and really does its job brilliantly. And to be honest, my one or two gripes with the Ox aren't really anything that haven't reared their heads before. It's fantastic to see that UA have finally assigned the purpose to the foot switch out on the back of the Ox with the latest firmware update. 
But that said, it is still a little bit befuddling to see that there are no XLR outs on the back of the aux. And in terms of live use, I can really see this presenting some issues. Obviously, it's got quarter inch jack output, but if you're looking to run this to a stage box, that's more than likely going to mean that you're going to need some converters, which if you forget them or they get lost, could present an issue. Same with the power supply. Again, it's unique to the aux. So if that's forgotten or lost or stolen, you're going to be unable to power the unit. Speaking of live use, I can't say I would get a tremendous amount of use out of the aux, to be honest. I mean, primarily for the fact that I'm not looking to attenuate my amps when I'm playing live. My two main amps are Victory V140, 100 watts, and a Fuchs Clean Machine, again, 75 watts. The sole intention of both of those amps is high, clean headroom. So I'm just not looking to attenuate them. But it is worth mentioning that if you are looking to attenuate your amp or not as the case may be even at its highest setting the aux is always attenuating your amp so if you're looking for something transparent which is not coloring the sound of your amp at all when it's not turned on obviously there are going to be better options than the aux <laughs> Now competition is pretty stiff for the aux and I guess the most notable example is the tube amp expander. Now I've not spent nearly as much time with the tube amp expander as I have with the aux but every time I've used it I've been incredibly impressed and the one impression that I have been left with is that I would say the tube amp expander is a little bit more geared towards live use. It's more discreet, it's rack mountable and you have infinitely more control or kind of tweakability of the unit from the front panel without being so reliant on the app. In that respect, again, I would reiterate that I think the tube amp expander would come into its own live, whereas the aux may be more geared towards studio use. More recently, we also have the Two Notes Captor X, which at £469 and being new out is really making a lot of waves in the guitar industry at the moment. Comes in at well under half the price of the Ox, and for the price, seems incredibly well featured. I must admit, I've not spent any time with one as of yet. I'm hoping to remedy that soon, but from what I've seen of the videos, it does look incredibly well featured. You do sacrifice on functionality a little bit, I guess, in that it is 8 ohms only, and from what I've seen of the digital interface, it isn't half as sweet wish, shall we say, as the Universal Audio Ox. But that said, it is infinitely smaller and looks infinitely more kind of roadworthy, I guess. Looks infinitely more durable in that respect. So if it is half as good as it promises to be, we do have a potential Ox killer on our hands, even more so given its price. I mean, if I was looking to use this live, no. I think there are cheaper and more effective and transparent attenuators out there. But in terms of functionality, it is cool to see that they have added a use for the foot switch. But again, maybe with the exception of the 1176 compressor, which to give it its credit is absolutely fantastic. I can't really see that I would get much use out of the delay or reverb or any of the kind of effects that are built into it. I think if you have the money to splash on an aux, you probably already have your favourite pedals that do those jobs, arguably better than the aux does, or at least with more functionality. So would I buy one for studio use or home use? 
Absolutely. Honestly, I've been really impressed by the Ox, not only in terms of its aesthetics, which I guess is part of the course with UA at this point, but in terms of its functionality and its sound, which I guess is the most important part, really is an incredible bit of gear. To be honest, most of the recording I do for Friday Fretworks is more often than not either with the Helix or with Native Instruments guitar rig, depending on my mood and what I'm looking for. But having the Ox on hand to really kind of utilize parts of my normal live rig during lockdown has been really cool. It's really inspiring and honestly I've not got as close to the kind of feel of a live gig with the Helix or with Native Instruments as I have with the Ox in recent weeks. It really has been inspiring to rig it up. It's a little bit more of a pain in the ass, I guess ultimately to wire it all up but once you have got it its digital interface is incredibly intuitive and as I said the sounds you get from it really are on another level. I can also see myself getting a hell of a lot of use of the Ox in studio sessions, which may seem a bit bizarre, I guess, given it is emulating a real-world miking of a speaker, but numerous sessions I've done in the past where you're working with maybe a producer or an engineer who doesn't necessarily know your guitar sound, having the Ox to take in, and even if you don't end up using it, but using your preset sound to give them some idea of what it is you're aiming for is undoubtedly going to give my inner control freak some sense of calm that I probably wouldn't have had otherwise. So there you have it. As ever, I'm Chris Burke. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Please do subscribe, hit the bell icon if you haven't already. And I shall see you next week for another episode of Friday Fireworks. Cheers, guys. Take care. I'll see you soon.